Oogenesis is the formation of the female sex cell or the female gamete. Oogenesis consists of two events that are happening at the same time. First event is the meiotic event where meiosis takes place, meiosis 1 and 2. And the second event that occurs at the same time is the development of the follicle. Let's take a look at the meiotic event first. Oogenesis begins during the fetal stage itself. At the fetal stage, the primordial germ cell will undergo mitosis and become the ogonium. The ogonium then will develop and grow into primary oocyte. And all this while, you can see the number of cells is 2n. This means that the cells contain all the chromosomes of the organism. In human beings, we have 46 chromosomes. That means that all these cells, the primordial germ cell, the ogonium, and the primary oocyte, all contain 46 chromosomes. And then the primary oocyte will begin meiosis 1. However, meiosis 1 will be stalled or will be stuck at prophase 1. So the primary oocyte will stop at prophase 1. During the fetal development, about 7 million primary oocytes are produced. After birth, about 6 million of these primary oocytes will undergo programmed cell death or apoptosis. So from the 7 million, we now have 1 million primary oocytes remaining. And these primary oocytes will continue to die until the female reaches puberty. At puberty, primary oocytes will reduce to about 300,000 and all are still at prophase 1. However, when puberty hits, then prophase 1 will finally continue on and meiosis 1 will be completed. Once meiosis 1 is completed, we have two haploid cells. This is the beginning of the production of haploid cells. A haploid cell contains the haploid number of chromosomes, that is, half of the number of chromosomes of the organism. In the case of human beings, we have 46 chromosomes, which means haploid cells will only contain 23 chromosomes one of each of the homologous chromosome pairs. When we look closely at the two haploid cells formed here, one is much larger than the other. One contains a lot more cytoplasm than the other. And the small cell is known as the first polar body. The larger cell is known as the secondary oocyte. So the primary oocyte has now formed the secondary oocyte. The secondary oocyte will begin meiosis II. However, once again, meiosis II is not completed. And so what we get is a secondary oocyte that is stalled once again at metaphase II. This secondary oocyte is what is released during ovulation. And now the secondary oocyte is going to remain at the metaphase II stage until a sperm penetrates the secondary oocyte. Then meiosis II is going to be completed. And when meiosis II is completed, the secondary oocyte will then become, once again, you will see cells of two different sizes, one smaller cell and one larger cell. The smaller cell is known as the second polar body, whereas the larger cell, this cell is what we call the ovum. Finally, the ovum is produced. Now, what happens to the first polar body? The first polar body may either degenerate or it could also undergo meiosis II. When the first polar body undergoes meiosis II, it becomes two further polar bodies. These are cells with very little cytoplasm. At the end of the day, all the polar bodies are going to degenerate. Now we go to what's going on with the follicle development. After birth, we have the primary oocyte, which was stuck at prophase 1. And then we have a layer of cells surrounding this primary oocyte, known as the follicle cells. When one layer of follicle cells surrounds the primary oocyte, the combination of these two things is known as the primary follicle. At puberty, when the menstrual cycle begins, follicle-stimulating hormone is released and follicle-stimulating hormone is going to stimulate the growth of the follicle cells. And so from one layer of follicle cells, this is going to become more and more layers of follicle cells. And when the primary oocyte becomes the secondary oocyte, as we saw earlier during the meiotic events, then we have the secondary oocyte encapsulated by a few layers of follicle cells. This combination is known as the secondary follicle. The follicle cells are going to continue to grow and develop until it eventually becomes 
the graphene follicle. As you can see, the graphene follicle is much larger than the primary and secondary follicle. And you can see we have a region that is filled with liquid in between. This is actually known as the antrum. So now the graphene follicle is ready to release the secondary oocyte into the fallopian tubes from the ovaries. This occurs during ovulation. So during ovulation, the secondary oocyte is released. Now what's left is the follicle cells. And these follicle cells are going to develop into what we call the corpus luteum. Corpus luteum stands for yellow body. It is a bundle of cells which is going to be responsible to be producing progesterone. Remember that these two events take place simultaneously. So during the fetal stage, primary follicles are produced. And so you can see primary follicles all around in the ovary. Here, here and here. They will all be present around 7 million, but at birth, it reduces to 1 million. And at puberty, this is when the process continues. And then we have secondary follicles. As you can see, we have the secondary oocyte and we have a few layers of follicle cells surrounding it. This process and the continuing process from here until the end actually occurs during the menstrual cycle. I will prepare a separate lesson for that. I'll leave a link in the description below. And so the secondary follicles will then develop to become the graphene follicle. Inside the graphene follicle, we have the secondary oocyte. And this graphene follicle is then going to release the secondary oocyte during ovulation. The secondary oocyte is released. And once it is released, the secondary oocyte, if fertilized, will become the ovum. And finally, what's left of the graphene follicle? The follicle cells are going to become the corpus if you haven't yet, I'll suggest that you watch Spermatogenesis next. If you've learned something from this video, guys, please do me a favor and hit that like button. It really does help a lot. Thank you so much for doing that. And if you enjoy videos like this, do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one a week. See you guys in the next video.